All right, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to talk about today is a huge pet peeve of mine. I'm just going to search for EU directive. And the, th the thing you see here is EU approves controversial copyright directive. EU copyright directive vote articles 11 and 13 approved. EU backs copyright law, which could ban memes and change the internet forever. EU's disastrous copyright bill is back to break the internet. My trouble with these headlines is my best understanding of this so far is that this was a procedural vote to approve language which goes into the bill and then the bill still needs to be debated and voted on further. And honestly, if I could be so bold, if that if that understanding is correct, then you'd want the language to be as terrible as possible so it has the least chance of passing when it comes up for vote. Now, of course, also terrible language would then make it sound terrible, like if it got passed, that could be terrible too. So I understand everybody wanted it to die here, but I don't think there was any chance of it dying here. If I understand correctly, someone, maybe Kaylee, who might understand the EU and the status of this thing better, but my understanding was that it could not die here. It, would, it was only whether or not it was amended here. And since the amendments were approved, that doesn't actually change whether it goes up for further vote. If the amendments were not approved, it would go up for vote without the amendments, is my understanding. Is that, is, can anyone confirm or deny this? Yes, I mean, you're very, very close. So indeed, uh, the chance of it dying at this stage would have been quite slim, as it's just to approve the general text. So we're not even looking that much in detail in it. So all they've done now is to approve it for the commission now to go to the member nation and go over it line by line, in which member nations will possibly ask for further amendments. And if my understanding correctly, it's going to be January before it gets back to Parliament where it will be voted on again and where the actual chances of this dying, which it did before when this happened and it got to the same stage as it is now and it didn't make it through to the end. So here is a paragraph at the end of the Verge article. Despite these disagreements, the whole a whole thing about the you know memes being blocked and etc. Despite the disagreements about whether it's as bad as they think they as, as everybody says it is, what's clear is that the copyright directive needs to receive final approval by the European Parliament in January. Only then will it have a huge disruptive impact on the internet, the European Union, and around the world. And I agree that in in theory, if it was passed, it could have a huge effect because remember, it's not its not like the rest of the world just going to write off the European Union. A lot of money flows through the EU. So if there's a law and people want to reach the, the, cust the consumers and businesses in the EU, they're going to have to comply with the law. And in this case, the way the law is written, allegedly, I haven't, I haven't completely read through it myself. I think maybe we should at some point go through and, and look at the actual approved changes and see what the actual language is going to be up for debate is. That will be good to do. But my understanding is that it's the link tax and, and, and basically uh, limiting certain fair uses or something of copyright. So if you if those are things that are concerning, absolutely you should be concerned about this. But the hyperbole and the 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 all of the the outcry that there's this catastrophe that's already been approved and the world is ending, not even close. We have months of debate to go where we get to write to our congressmen or representatives, etc. In your case, if you're in the EU, you're directly affected by it, you should write as well. But really, this is a worldwide issue at this point, because it's not like you can just not deal with the EU if you're a large international company or have an international presence. Even my YouTube channel will probably be affected by it in some way if it was approved. YouTube will change policies and then all the creators will have to update their behavior to conform to the policies, whatever that is. I don't really know what, what, what that's going to be yet. We'll look into it and I'll get back to you with an edited video as opposed to just a Sunday show on it. 
but I really wanted to drive home today that it's the amendment that's been approved, not the actual directive yet. And it's a little bit unethical of these news organizations to say that it's been approved when they cut out the whole middle part of the amendment has been approved and it's EU directive approved. It should be EU directive amendment approved. But for some reason that gets lost because you won't click on that as much. Also, on a brighter note, I quickly want to add, because I see a lot of people commenting on the meme thing, uh, the European Parliament, I believe, I think it was the Parliament, actually posted on Twitter a meme the other day that the memes are not going to get affected at all by uh, this new directive if it does come to pass in January. So, slight bright side, you can still meme yeah. away. My understanding was there was a tweet that said that the parody directive or, or, or European Union directive on parody or some sort of decision on parody applies to memes. And so memes are, are pretty much assumed to be protected by that exception to copyright law or something. So I don't think memes are going away. What I'm mostly concerned about is just having 28 different, different laws from 28 different member states and other businesses having to spend money to comply with those 28 different laws and what if what if one of them what if it's like like the situation now i know the uk is not going to be part of the eu for very much longer but what if it's like the uk's law where they say oh well you know the 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 dog salute that looked like a nazi heil salute that was offensive to people and that offended our laws to the point that this person faces jail time or a big fine and you know and we can talk about count dankula some other time but what if it's something like that where one member state's law disagrees with other member states so now you've got to have 27 you got to have one law for 27 member states and you have to have a different way of handling belgium for example um not to not to rag on belgium but belgium is the one who recently uh made loot boxes uh, i believe a, a criminal offense and they are now fining or charging or something uh, one of the video game companies for not removing loot boxes. All right, everyone, thank you for joining me. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. This is the Lawful Masses Sunday Show, a community-supported channel and show that we do here. Thank you very much for supporting us on patreon.com slash ljfrench. And of course, also the Twitch subscribers cannot be overlooked. Thank you very much for your support on Twitch. Not the least of which is Breakfast Demon. Thank you very much for your donation of 25,000 bits about two days ago. Thank you to Whiskers is Cat for your 1,500 bit donation. And thank you to Fail or Faily 2008 for your 500 bit donation. Really appreciate you all there. Thank you to the Patreon sponsors. At the $50 level, we have Jonathan Doe, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie Andy, Kyle Mudrock, Vera Mantain, Sean McNamara, William Gonzalez, Michael Pierce, Grunkle Tia Marie, Terry Crisp, Richard Fournier, I think I got it right, and Michael Jones. Thank you very much for your support. And thank you to the $5 plus supporters who will be scrolling on the crawl and as well as the LED panel behind me. I have some dog video for you to take us out. It's the same dog video that took us in. So, uh, fair warning there. Where did it go? Ugh. There we go. We'll start it a little bit uh, late here. Just treading water, waiting for a ball. Yes. Only when they have a ball is it time to get out. That's the game we've made here. I got one. I got the other. Ilsa's leg is healing, and she is recovering very nicely, as you can see a little bit from the video. This was, uh, the doctor said that she could go in the pool after her first six or eight weeks of recovery. 
Uh, this is about eight weeks of recovery, and this will be the only time that she gets to go in this pool because it's being closed for the for the season. So my parents kept it open for an extra week, and uh, we were able to, to get Ilsa in the pool. There's also a question if Yossi's legs are better now. 